Now we're going to do the valve testing. Uh, we're going to test what is suspected to be a, a not very good valve. It's about 15 years old and it's been running in a Dynaco amplifier for some years. It's an EL34. So we plug it in the tester and then we set the tester up for this for this valve. It's only on set volts at present. You set that to there with this thoroughly lethal system. <laughs> but uh, it would never get made this, this way today. Anyway, we can see the AC mains volts is correct. So we need now need to set the electrodes up for the valve with these thumb wheels there. We go to the, the book here and we look up EL34. There it is. And we she, see it should be 126. So one two so one two six five four zero five four zero three one zero three one zero okay that gives us it tells you on pin one is cathode pin two is a heater Pin 6 is the anode, pin 5 is the screen, pin 4 is the grid, there's nothing on that pin, then you've got the heater and the cathode again there. Okay, then we set up the voltage, the filament voltage to 6 volts, which is already set. The voltage grid 1, which is 13.5. The anode volts, which is 250. The screen volts also 250 and the anode current 75 milliamps 75 so there's the heater volts the anode volts the screen volts the anode current between these two and this sets, sets what we're going to test that's the grid volts and this is the mutual conductance which should be 11 on a good valve. So now we're going to test heater continuity, which is good. This is insulation resistance. Cathode heater insulation resistance when it's cold. And then we wait till it warms up a few minutes. That's cathode heater test on a hot valve. It takes a couple of minutes for these things to warm up. This is a CT160. It's uh, an old military tester, as you can see from up here. It says test set electronic valve. They could never put words in the right order. And then the military number and the serial number and so on. Beautifully made. Built like a brick outhouse. The advantage of this is you can get to all the electrodes there. And there are even links, I can't touch it because it's live, between the anode so if we took that off we could put a current meter in to measure the current that it's actually drawing and you can see the insulation resistance is quite good there even with it warm so we'll put it on the test now on anode one you put that to set zero and you adjust this to read zero for the test this takes a little while to stabilize and you can tell this has got considerably less amounts of negative volts to stabilize it. Ten, eleven, twelve, as opposed to the thirteen point five that the manual says it should be. And you can see it's drifting, it's just warming up. Give it a rough idea of what milliamps per volt it will be. We bring that up to where it says one. And it is about eleven. And that is correct. So this is actually not a bad one, though it is taking a little while to stabilise. Valves do take a little while to warm up. Ah, not good. I think this valve is destined for the bin.
Sometimes on these big power valves it takes a little while for them to stabilise. This is about 11. Well, it's not a bad one. It's not too bad. Though it is still drifting. For those of you who watching this who set up their power amps regularly using big power output valves and setting fixed bias with little trim pots on the thing this is how long it takes to stabilize so leave the thing on for about half an hour before you do that adjustment it's looking a bit more stable now and that's 8.5 now it's stabilised. So if we take that to 11, we can see it's still technically good, but it's not wonderful. But the negative grid volts, as you can see from this, are now only 12.5 as opposed to 13.5. So it's a little off, but it's not far off. And it's still drifting. Yes, it's about 9 milliamps per volt. So it's not too bad. Okay, let's try another one. One volt on the uh, bias voltage. Having said that, they have done 15 years. Let it warm up and stabilise again. Big valves do take quite some time to warm up because they've got big fat heaters. But here we have a valve which is definitely not a happy bunny. Although it measures all right, except the heater cathode leakage is a bit bad. As you can see, we're holding it here. The Trying to set the zero is virtually impossible. So the as we vary the negative grid volts, it gets worse and worse and worse. I'm holding everything steady and you can see it's still changing. Now, while I've been off camera for the last two or three minutes, we've been messing around with this one, just trying to get it stable. And you can see it's just not happy. And you can see the meters varying around. I would suggest that this is not a good valve for any audio amplifier, no matter how well it measures. This is not a happy bunny. We'll try and adjust that back to zero. What we're doing with this one is varying the negative grid volts and therefore the current through it. It's actually sort of vaguely okay there for a second and that's measuring about 10 milliamps per volt but if we go back to here we see it's drifted again and it's been doing this now for about 10 minutes. So I don't think it will be possible to actually set up an amplifier with this one in. It's actually getting quite warm now I wouldn't want to touch that thing with my bare hands. And uh, let's see if we can set it to zero now. We've driven it a little bit hard. It's a bit of an ancient piece of kit. I can't get a good zero on it at all. I don't think realistically we're going to get a decent reading out of this. Okay. In fact, we're measuring 7 milliamps per volt. I think we can conclude that this is definitely a duff valve. This time we're doing a, a dual rectifier. This is a 5Z4 up there. Everything's been set up. We just need to set up heater current and anode current for this. Anode current's already set. It's warmed up, as you can see, hopefully. There, nice and hot. So we're going to put it on test. I'm going to switch it to D1, which, as you can see, shows that it's conducting, and D2 shows that it's conducting just as much. There is no mutual conductance or anything else with these. It's just quite simple, go or no go. So rectifier testing, as you can see, is very easy. One thing to be noticed on these old valve testers uh, is you have to be very careful. They have covers here covering exposed voltages for valves that slot down there for transmitting valves, for other transmitting valves here as well. And these open links for anodes so you can put meters in series. On many older valves like this you have top caps 
Sometimes these are anodes, like this one. Sometimes they're grids to minimize capacitance. Um, there are flying leads which you plug into these holes here and then you plug onto the top of the valve. This is a very old one, as you can see. I don't even know what it is. Not really important. <laughs> it's an old British seven pin base and there are uh, sockets here to deal with those. Okay, here we're dealing with a double triode, the famous 6SN7. It's already in the test thing here. We're looking at the cathode heater leakage and you can see it's just over 25 mega ohms, which is more than adequate for one of these devices. We go on to test there, switch it to the first anode, set that there, and we zero this again. It's not a big power valve now, so it zeroes quite simply. There you go, nice and stable. Take that round till it comes to one milliamp per volt. And we can read off the gain as just about 2.5 milliamps per volt. It's meant to have 2.8, but that's good enough. Then we go to the second anode. When we, that's it, we set the zero on that, which is remarkably close to the eight volts that it says in the manual. And then we go again, and that's, that's just about 2.5 milliamps per volt again. So we can say this is a very good valve, excellent condition. The interesting thing about valves is that they are made with so much precision compared to transistors. If you look at a valve data book, you will see that it has uh, a precise gain for the valve, which is should be known quite accurately. If you look at a transistor data book, you see ranges for a transistor like the BC107 of a gain anywhere between 200 and 900. Feedback is essential with semiconductor devices to stabilize the gain. It is not so essential to stabilize gain of valve devices, though it's often used to reduce distortion and noise. Okay, here we have another 6SN7 with a classic problem. Heater resistance is good. Anode to the rest here. Anode 1 is good. Anode 2, 7 meg. If you've got 7 meg from an anode to something else, it doesn't look good. Screen. Anode 1 to screen. There's resistance there. Cathode heater to the rest, it's not good at all. So we, we don't put any volts on this valve. This would possibly, not only the valve is obviously no good. Um, it's heating up, that shouldn't be heating up. Yeah, this is obviously not a very happy valve, and I think we don't need to go any further than that. Another 6SN7, it's a double triode, so that both sides should have roughly the same gain. We take that up to zero on anode one, and we rotate that until we find the gain. And that's one milliamp per volt there, which reads at 2.5, which is quite reasonable for one of these. Go to anode two. And you can see that firstly that is hard over. So we take that one round and already the voltage on the negative grid voltage is far too low. We take it round, we're trying to get it up to zero, flat out. That's just over one milliamp per volt. It should be 2.8. So this is, uh, we set it to 2.8 there and you can see it's in the replace. So this is a thoroughly unbalanced valve and no good.